Let's start with credit, because it was one thing that does affect the pace of deals. Is it affecting it from your point of view right now? Absolutely. It's getting better, it's still constrained. Fourth quarter of 22, you had nothing. Today, you actually have the markets uh, loosening up for the right deals. The initiating data point, for example, the largest LBO in the past uh, six, seven, eight months was a deal with Blackstone and Emerson uh, for their climate business. $14 billion deal, no bank debt was available. Uh, the private uh, direct lending market stepped in, firms like Apollo, Blackstone, KKR, Aries. Uh, they did five and a half billion of financing to see it through. Half of that has been replaced in the past week by the banks. So it really depends on the credit and um, it depends on uh, what the deal is, but there is absolutely credit available. Obviously, the key is it's much more expensive. You should assume for uh, a private equity transaction, it's 500 basis points or so higher than it would have been a year and a half ago. And for a corporate deal, 200, 250 basis points. And that leads to the next issue, which is how you price an asset for sale. And obviously, with multiples staying high and elevated and at 18 times PE, it's the same as it was last year, same as it was in 21, but yet your returns in any transaction are more difficult. So you have to think about uh, how to get the uh, buyer and the seller to come to agreement. Not, not easy. As I recall, some of you might have had something to do with the Emerson deal. Is that we did. I, I, you, you can give us a plug. I won't. <laughs> okay, I'll do that. Uh, so, so let's go to that question of buyers and sellers and where they think the price is, because some of those prices are coming down. Valuations are affected by interest rates and also some slowing of the economy in some places. Uh, have the sellers gotten their heads around the fact that their price may be lower? they finally starting to do that, which is actually why I think there's more discussion. You don't see it yet in terms of announcements, but you see companies thinking more about uh, M&A as part of uh, their thinking in 23. And I would venture to say that as we exit the year 23 and get into 24, you'll see activity actually start to pick up quite a bit. So you think it will come back? Do you think we'll reach the levels we had before? Because we had some record levels there. Oh, boy, that was high. <laughs> if you think about a $5 trillion peak market, um, that probably uh, unlikely. But the idea that you'll have a stable global M&A market of $4 trillion or so a year, I think Absolutely. And what you find out generally about M&A, David, now is it's less prone to cyclicality. It's part of a company's core strategy. Most companies are actually very good at it. And um, when you're thinking about new avenues of growth, new areas for your business, if you're thinking about the pace of disruption uh, and how you combat that, it becomes uh, important for most companies to want to consider. When you've been on with us before, you've emphasized, Blair, that uncertainty is one of the biggest factors in determining whether companies want to do deals or not. Uh, where are we with uncertainty? Because there seems to be a lot of uncertainty around right now. We are in uncharted, complicated waters, starting with, obviously, the debt ceiling, which we're going to come back to, um, the banking environment more generally, and whether you think we're in a slowdown or um, something more severe in the coming months. I happen to be in a slowdown camp. I think there's a lot of resiliency that we don't account for, uh, a lot of tailwind that will uh, lead to stability. But that uncertainty clearly is an issue when you think about doing a transaction. And remember, you want to be able to think of it a transaction when there's a macro tailwind because it covers up uh, some of your assumptions that may not pan out. It's just people do better in a growth environment. Any company does. So um, clearly an issue, and I think until the debt ceiling situation uh, resolves, um, and that's a, with a question mark, a hope, um, it'll be uh, weighing pretty heavily. We've had this debt ceiling situation before. 2011 was the time we had a downgrade actually from it. And we have a lot of people, the President of the United States as well as Mitch McConnell, agreeing we can't have a default. We actually had former President Trump saying this week, well, maybe it wouldn't be that bad a thing. How does it figure in the minds of people doing deals, CEOs and others thinking about deals? Are they taking that into account? Do they take it seriously? So everybody's taking it seriously. Let's get away from the deal market for a second. Let's talk about a company's performance. Uh, I think the debt situation, the debt center situation already is having a big impact. If you think about um, driving a car, you're a passenger, and the driver goes 90 miles an hour and then slows down, you're going to think twice about getting back in the car. What you have already, simply the specter of it, is probably hit GDP growth, 30 basis points. It's probably hit uh, jobs, uh, 250,000, according to CEA, the Council of Economic Advisors. Um, and then you start to think about what the impact is if you go over and have a default that is uh, measured in days and weeks. The fact of the matter is that's a half a million jobs. That's a half a point of GDP growth. 
And that's before you start to think of the uh, absolutely urgent consequences of something that's protracted. Blair, you know Wall Street backwards and forwards, but you also have some experience in Washington. I talked recently to Josh Bolton from the Business Roundtable, and he said if you poll his CEOs, they all say, we're not going to default. But if you then ask the second question, how are we going to avoid it? Nobody has an idea. Can you see a path forward? So, uh, of course I can. Obviously, I'm not licensed to practice politics. <laughs> I'm in New York in banking. Um, but everything from a clean debt ceiling to a promise to negotiate to I, kicking the can down the road is hard, but it will tell you there's progress. Um, I do think that the markets will uh, not embrace in any way some of the ideas that are, uh, should we say, more creative. Everything from the 14th Amendment to um, prioritization, all difficult. And I think that the markets will be at a minimum choppy, but much more likely um, highly volatile. In fact, right now, the, spread, the credit default swap spread yeah. is uh, much higher than it was. You read in 2011, we're four times higher than it was in 2011. Uh, that's one level of uncertainty. We also have regulatory uncertainty, particularly in the antitrust area, both from the FTC and from the Justice Department. Uh, Bloomberg actually had a piece this week uh, saying that that really is deterring uh, or uh, some of the CEOs from moving forward because you're not sure whether it will approve, but even more than that, how long it will take. There's a lot of uncertainty surrounding it. Are you dealing with that as you advise me? Uh, absolutely, David. And if you just... It shows up in the numbers. Year to date, we have, I think, 14 deals over $10 billion versus last year was 24 deals. But you account for that in your thinking. If it's going to take 18 months for a transaction to close, you spend a lot of time thinking about how both the acquired business and the acquiring company manage their own businesses, keep the base business um, performing well, and uh, try to minimize uncertainty for, for all the employees. You can think about different structures. If you use stock, for example, in a transaction, uh, the, uh, the selling company has more of a uh, uh, vested interest, if you, if you will, more of a uh, uh, meeting of the minds in terms of what it takes to, to do well. Um, and I'd also say you, you think about the whole question of synergy in a different way. I think that you need to be more conservative, certainly on cost, and you need to be more um, aggressive and absolutely committed to the idea that a transaction leads to better growth, which leads to job creation, which leads to potentially better uh, outcomes for consumers. All this factors into um, the thinking. Um, I would also finally say that it's much more the administration using a megaphone mm -hmm. than actually litigating that uh, uh, people are attentive to. But all that said, um, smart deals are still happening and they will continue to happen. One last one, Blair. Uh, we heard from Jamie Dimon of J.P. Morgan again this week, and he reiterated something he had said before. I am far more concerned about geopolitics, Ukraine, trade, you know, Russia, our relations with China, and et cetera. Does that affect your business? Of course it does. Now, I will tell you that I don't know a CEO who is not exquisitely attuned to the geopolitical environment everywhere. Um, they are experienced in operating globally in uh, all kinds of different areas. And it absolutely goes into what kind of advice and what kind of discussion you're going to have with the CEO, what kind of discussion you're going to have with the board. Where should you put capital over a five and 10 year period, not just over the next year? What are the, um, the black swan risk, or frankly, what I call a gray rhino, something that's staring you in the face, but you just don't pay attention to it, and then it actually hits you. Um, all of this makes being a senior leader in a company uh, more difficult, more uncertain than ever. And I applaud a lot of them for actually uh, steering the ship through this kind of uh, complication. But I will also tell you that uh, companies are better than ever managing through uncertainty. We've had a decade, a decade and a half of uncertainty, yet companies across the country, big and small, performing better than ever. Just last quarter, 80% of our companies surpassed estimates. Granted, the estimates were revised, but surpassed estimates. and. Um, Companies are more nimble in how they make decisions, more nimble in terms of how they take data information and uh, figure out what the outcome, potential outcomes could be and factoring that in. So uh, more difficult as a macro, but we have an industry and a private sector that's up to the challenge.